Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, everyone, welcome along to episode 47 of ECI TV. We have Dozer way up north joining us this week and good old uh, Jenko in his uh, in his hub. Uh, <laughs> in his hub. So in we've got hub. some industry delay news, some uh, news and gossip and a few show and tells of some latest products. So we'll be back real shortly. G'day, he's Gary. And he's Shane. And you're watching ECI TV. You certainly are. Enjoy. So this episode, we're going to kick off with a discussion. We figured uh, we got Sean here, so um, we're not going to be short of stuff to talk about. Um, so we thought we'd come up with a discussion topic. <laughs> it could go um, anywhere. It could. It could. It could. I think uh, Gary, since he's uh, got the tightest ties with the industry, can tell us about how the industry is still under the pump with COVID delays. Oh, yeah. Look, it, it's something we've covered a couple of times, but it doesn't seem like it's getting any better. We um, and, and it's more to inform the viewers, but also just to make it a bit easier on some of the retailers and wholesalers around Australia uh, and around the world, actually, because product is becoming very, very um, scarce. So, you know, if you do go into your local or, or however you purchase your products, um, don't be surprised if a lot of your normal stuff is very hard to find because there's massive, massive delays with raw materials, production runs and everything like that overseas. And, you know, in the past, um, you know, you might have a delay for a couple of months, but now we're talking 12 months, possibly two years for some items. So... Wow. It is very difficult, so you may have to start to look for alternatives. Um, I know one of the things that's going to become very, very scarce soon is tyres and tubes. So I think we'll be back at, back to the good old days where we used to repair, you know, do puncture repairs on tubes, but tyres are going to be very scarce. So, I mean, personally, we're almost out of V rubber tyres, and at this stage, I would envisage probably 12 months to 18 months before we're going to see any stock. Um, there's a couple of reasons behind that, and one is that obviously just the the um, influx of of people wanting to purchase um, products because of the popularity of of cycling in general. Um, production itself is actually delayed because of of COVID and raw material problems. But for V tyres over in Bangkok, um, the government's actually moved in. They've got four thousand employees and four factories. And the government has come in and actually closed two of the factories um, oh, for, wow. for a period of who knows how long. So obviously that's got a knock-on effect. That's for you people up in New South Wales and Queensland. Um, and what that does, it just creates such a delay. So I know talking with the guys at VTIs, um, if I put in, in just, you know, for example, if I put an order in today, it'll be 12 months before they can even look at manufacturing them. So um, tyres and tubes are going to be very scarce. So if you have got tyres and tubes, hold on to them. Um, if you normally run Tiogas or V-Rubbers or Maxis or, or whatever, um, you might have to look for alternatives and just grab what you can when you can, just so you've got a little bit of a stockpile because they will run out. So that's, uh, that's one. Uh, seats, uh, I think we've spoken about that in the past, up to 24 months before you can um, get a manufacturing run of seats through Velo. Profile Racing, one of the products that we do a lot of here at ECI, is um, behind the pump. We haven't had a delivery of cranks probably for almost six months, and it could be another three months before we see any cranks, which is unheard of. We've been doing Profile for probably about 22 years, and um, this is the first time I've ever seen it like this. I even chased up some park tools um, for, through another wholesaler in in, um, in Victoria here to try and um, I needed some tooling. And um, some of the tools I was after, they said they may see them in July 2022, but there's no certainty with that. So it's, it's right across the board. I don't know if you guys have experienced yeah, you know, like in, in your industries or whether you've tried to purchase things that you just can't get. But, yeah, that's just the, the state of the play at the moment uh, for the cycle industry. One yeah. thing I've been um, telling people to do is, for, you know, gone off and replaced a tyre and gone off and replaced a tube um, and not actually had a spare, I'll tell them, you know, make sure you grab a spare now because when you yeah. go to grab it in six months' time, it may not be there for you. So, I mean, I, I'm 
of the mindset of keeping stock of stuff here. I keep spare all consumables, chains, yep. rack yep. cables, tires, tubes, um, anything I think I might have problems with, even sometimes stems and handlebars. <clears throat> I may not need them for 12 months, but at least I've got them just in case, you know, in 12 months time when I do need them, they're there. Um, mm. So it's probably a, a good thing to have a few extra tires and tubes laying around, which means I need to place an order on some 20 inch tubes before everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're right. I mean, they, we're almost out of tubes and wow. honestly, it'll be 12 months before we see some. So that's how that's how bad it is. Does that also come from the rubber being thrown in like basically one part of the world, which has been hit really hard with COVID, I think. You know, most yeah, of the rubber so comes from the, I mean, Southeast Asia. Yeah, look, um, v tires um, isn't too bad. I think I've covered this before that they actually own a, a rubber plantation. They had that before they started manufacturing tires. And so that, they, yeah. they do have their own rubber plantation, but it does only account for like 10% of their production. So yeah, okay. they still have to purchase in ninety percent of rubber to do what you know yeah. to run their um, machines. And so it's it's, it's it's really just touch and base, and, and it's more just to say, look, don't go, you know, thinking that your local store's not doing their job by sourcing products for you. It is just hard to come hard. by. Yeah, and I think we've been spoiled for many years that you know you you want a purple stem in a certain reach, you can just you can just order it. You know, yeah. on a certain tie, you can just order it. Well, I mean, we haven't experienced this um, before. Ever. No. Ever. So, no. Um, Unprecedented. Yeah. So just just be kind. of. Um, the good part about it is, and I've noticed this with a lot of calls through dealers and, and consumers, is majority of people are aware. They'll ring yeah. up and want us at a crank and say, look, I haven't got any. And they'll say, look, you probably don't even know when you're going to get them. I said, that's right. And they just accept it. So, um <laughs> Yeah, it just is what it is. It's just the way the world is at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah, so. unfortunately, yeah. yeah. But there, yeah, that's that little thing on COVID delays at the moment. So. Hey, Sean, no, Sean, do you normally keep spares, tyres, tubes, all that sort of stuff at home? I, I, norm, I normally do, yes. And I guess if I was to get desperate because I've got a couple of bikes, I would probably just cross some stuff over if I was really that desperate. But, yeah, I think I've got about six tubes here. Probably got two chains, a couple of brake cables. Like you, I remember you actually telling me that ages ago. I think when this was kicking off at the start, and I remember you, and maybe it was even you, Gary. Maybe, maybe on our Sydney trip and saying that yeah, just things are going to get bad. I know you had a couple of spare tyres on the Sydney trip because I saw you with your shirt off um, one day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's because yeah, you said you needed another spare tire for the van. <laughs> you know how it is. I'm happy to help in any way. <laughs> you know, it was just a bit awkward trying to fit a Massey Ferguson tire onto onto the uh, Ford Transit. That's a bit harsh. I think we should talk some news now. Okay. <laughs> you guys are going off topic. <laughs> no, that's unusual for for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's so, catch some news. Let's do that. So catching up on some news that's come up and uh, we've posted to Ultra over the past three weeks now. Um, the Rad Movie 35th anniversary is rapidly yeah, yeah. approaching. So that'll be on October 14th. Uh, across the US, they're screening um, in selected cinemas and there'll be a special, never seen before, a Rad documentary inside the BMX movie that changed everything feature. So hopefully, Ooh. I don't know, we'll get to see it at some point. Um, clearly, I don't think there'll be any cinemas running Rad. I think the last time I've watched Rad in its entirety when it was screening in cinemas here in Australia, so that's quite a while ago. Um, so I thought, oh, I better do something about this. It's um, I'm a BMXer of 40 years, seen the movie maybe once and bits of it um, <laughs> since. So I actually went out and bought a Blu-ray copy of it, and I'm waiting for that to arrive. So on the 14th of October, I'll be sitting in front of my um, uh, TV and, and watching Rad, I think. I've watched it so, so much. I mean, I used to even watch it before we'd go riding. Hey, 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 that's that's so cool, Gaz. That's amazing. And I did see, um, I follow um, Bill or Crew, Crew Jones on Instagram and social media. And he's really, really active in the, the BMX community. Him and Eddie Fiola and Martin Aparaho. They, they still get around and promote Rad. And um, I used to love watching it before going riding with me and my mates and sit around and watch it on VHS. <laughs> and um, 
Remember that? Remember when we used to pop it in and go down? A lot of the kids watching today will have no idea what a VHS is, but you still yeah. pop it in and go down, don't you? With um, beta and yeah, that's it. And yeah, VHS. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know the beta of my Mazzy Ferguson tire. Um, yeah. So um, what's, what's the matter, Shane? Shane? What's the matter? Shane? Nothing. Nothing. Keep going. <laughs> what's the matter? Okay. Yeah, and it's just really cool. And he he apparently Bill is going to do a a new release, a, a re-release of his book, My Rad Life, and also he's going to do some special T-shirts. So go on the socials and check those out too. Very cool. You've got, you got that book, haven't you, Gary? I thought you had, had a signed copy of it. No. No. Hmm. no. You can get a signed copy. So he do you know someone a with copy. a signed copy? No, it wasn't me. I wish it was. Got this, yeah, it's apparently a really interesting re- I haven't read it. I really would love to read it. Talks a lot about his acting career and his uh, relationship with Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son, and and stuff like that, and as a musician, because not a lot of people know that he's actually a musician also. He, he's a lovely guy to talk to. I mean, when, when he signed that picture for me in Las Vegas, um, I spent a fair bit of time with him. And, um, yeah, he was a great guy to talk to and very approachable and very relaxed and just happy to talk BMX for a bit like you, Dozer. Just happy to talk BMX forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like me and Paul in the back of the van. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, just got BMX for eight hours straight. <laughs> Meanwhile, Shane's in there making edits and all sorts of stuff of us eating food at McDonald's and stuff. Meanwhile, me and, me and Paul are just banging all the way talking about BMX in the back. <laughs> uh, the next thing we featured was um, the TRA BMX Double Cross and Dirt Jump Comp. So that's a, a backyard BMX race, which is a one-on-one thing that's been running for quite a few years. I think Red Bull even um, helped them along one year. Yep, um, did, so yeah. a lot of dirt jumpers and um, BMX pros have been there. I think at this more recent one, um, I think even Peyton Ridenow was there, the um, Olympian. That rides yeah, the was. <clears throat> so um, yeah. they, they attract um, quite a few people. They have a big dirt jump comp. That was on over the weekend. Um, I didn't catch the winners of that yet. I was hoping to wait for a video to be released and then I'll, I'll get around to sharing yeah. that once it's available. I saw, did you um, see any of that, Sean? I did. I saw um, Dick Cheeseburger. He was riding oh, on yeah. the SE guy. Yeah, he was riding on a big 26er. <laughs> he was had a huge crash, though, like his first lap around. But, yeah, he killed it. That sort of stuff is made for him. So, yeah, he's always putting on a show there. But... The play it was like it's a two man race and a lot of it's a lot of hips and doubles and stuff. There's no manualing anything there. It's either jump or die sort of thing. Well there's hardly any pedaling as well. It's downhill, yeah, the jumps hill. are huge. They are. Yeah. There's a feature. It's a lot of fun though. Yeah, absolutely. There's a feature where you jump onto the top of a shed and then back yeah. off it again. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's just oh, that's that's so good. And I guess a lot of people are like I guess well not so much America, but just that simple stuff, BMX, you know, we, we all starting to look back at that and go, this is what it's all about. Cause we're not racing flat out and losing, mm. losing, losing what we sort of got into BMX for fun. You know, it's, that's, it's good that we can watch stuff like that and go, yeah, that's what it's all about. So yeah, it was good to watch. So it's all over socials as you can check it out. Yeah. Um, and BSX 2020 have an officially announced now that Mongoose will be our platinum partner, so the naming right partner for the next year's event. Um, and they have revealed that they'll be supplying us with three bikes as prizes. Um, yeah, so we've already got one bike here. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, uh, and they haven't told us which bikes they will be because they, they did actually launch, um, a new range, or they're about to launch a new range of Repop 80s bikes very soon. So uh, we that. may even see one yeah. or two of those. I'm not sure, but um, Julian from Mongoose Australia told us that um, they have a few things to release um, and have embargoed um, the new models and uh, what's coming up until October. So only a couple of weeks down, we should know exactly what we have as prizes from Mongoose. I know one of them is called the Californian. Oh, that's the, that's the, the re- new repops. Pop. Yeah, the um, Repop Californian and the Super, Super Goose. Super Goose, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they're, they're very 80s looking machines. I um, started on a so, Mongoose myself, <clears throat> um, one of the half chromo, um, I think it's pre- steel. Well, yeah, half chromo, half high 10. 
um, which predated the Californian. Yep, it did, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess a lot of guys my age around the era that I started um, started off on mongooses. They were like, um, bums really, weren't they? Everyone's got one. <laughs> I never actually, actually I, I've never... Go, sorry, actually, go. the first first BMX bike I bought for my son was a Mongoose Mini Californian. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and, they're, and they're also doing, with that repop, they're actually doing the pro-class rim, you know, the one, the holes that were drilled out and oh, yeah. the rims. Yeah, they're doing all that to, to basically make it look like that. Because I remember seeing, like, you know, Paul Librio and all those guys that rode on Mongoose back then, back there, and, you know, even Dean Patch and that. I remember the rims, I'm like... How are they riding these rims with <laughs> holes drilled in them? You know, like how's that even working? I ran <laughs> those rims. Crazy... I ran yeah. those rims. Yeah, I um had them with Sun Turbo Light hubs, so there were oh, holes wow. everywhere. <laughs> oh, you're a bit special, aren't you? Yeah. We know how you like your holes, but anyway. All right, yeah. moving right along. along. <laughs> um, so the Mongoose BSX 2022 has a new silver partner. Uh, that's Wes Colbran, um, who, who's supplying a forgotten, damned, complete freestyle bike, which I have here right next to my desk. Damn. Thanks, uh, Wes. Where's so, yeah, um, always goes above and beyond. He was here riding only two years ago, and he supplied us with a complete bike for the last event and complete yeah. bike again for the next event. Fingers crossed the borders open up and he'll be able to come down and hang out with us for the week. Uh, yeah. We owe him place. a barbecue. We owe him a barbecue. I think we owe him quite a few barbecues. We do owe him a barbecue. Where's he, looked after us. He, he looked after us so good in Sydney that when we went yeah. to his place with that barbie. Such a good guy. Props to Wes. <laughs> uh, and while talking about BSX, Risen Race, where we'll be joining us again as a bronze partner. So we'll be able to win some Risen Race gear at BSX 2022 as well. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, so I've done a few interviews over the past few weeks. Um, there was an interview with Sam from Jigsaw Jumps, who um, takes us through the history of the business and uh, shows us how to configure all the jumps in the um, different um, stages. So I think there were four different jumps and each of them has at least three different stages. Um, Gary, you went over there and had a look around today, didn't you? I certainly did. Shot out to Jigsaw Jumps today and uh, met the guys there and had a look at their setup, which was pretty cool. Scored myself a, a cool little Jigsaw Jump um, demo bike, I suppose you could call it, or promotional um, paperweight. But yeah, That's so cool. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, went out and saw the guys today, so um, we've struck a little bit of a deal and probably be having those on our website as well. But uh, but yeah, great little setup and an awesome little concept. The the fact that they pack down so much into a backpack, you can ride down to the parks yeah, yeah. with your kids. It's um it's pretty neat. So we're going to have a couple of sets of those jumps eventually when we do get back to racing that we can take along to a few race meetings so kids can destroy a few rims on them. <laughs> But it'd be, it's it's oh sorry. That's when that? supply of rims is uh, a lot more um, free flowing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. hope so. next year. I just think it's good because we're so re restricted, especially down here. Take a jump somewhere in a park or whatever. Just hit up <laughs> some jumps, and then you can pack it up in after your four hours of exercise mm. and and go off home. You know, it makes it. You can ride your bike absolutely anywhere. You know. Yeah. yeah. Great idea. Yeah. They're, Great they're pretty, ideas. They're pretty cool. They, so. are, they look good and look really well made too. Like when Seamus, I uh, watched the, the interview we did, they had such good quality, like really mm. good quality. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's good to see an Australian company and some guys get behind their idea and their passion and make it happen, especially, you know, in these times. Yeah, they're go-getters for sure. They are. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So, um, last weekend I um, started digging at my track to make – uh, some transitions where I'm going to be using one of the large um, jigsaw jumps. So, um, I mean, you could just whack the jump anywhere, uh, but the way my track's set up, I needed to actually embed the jump into <laughs> into um, some of the features that I've got in the backyard just to make it a bit closer and a bit more usable. And I'm pretty excited about potentially some dry weather coming soon and I can actually ride it and have a play. One of the ones that impressed me was the little pocket rocket. So they've got a, a, a junior, a, a medium, and an extra large or whatever, but then they've got a pocket rocket that sort of sits somewhere in that mix. 
but it's 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 quite a narrow, um, compact little jump. It's got a real kick at the end. So where it's not a junior one uh, and it's not a large one, you can actually get quite a quite a boost off of it, and yeah. um, and it does pack down to quite a small little, quite easily carried um, setup. So. Yeah, I reckon the Pocket Rocket's probably a, a neat little unit that uh, will sell real well once people understand it. Paul Knox got himself one of those, um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does with it. Yeah. Oh, he'll, he'll be doing some great tricks off that. <laughs> God, I, love, I love his Instagram feeds of all these little flatland tricks. and <laughs> so impressed. Every time I see him, I'm like, that man, he's got some crazy bike skills. I love it. Yeah, he does. Um, another interview I did was with Bill Ryan from Supercross about the new Vision F1 frame. We discussed that on the last show. Um, mm. Gary had some questions, a whole bunch of other people had some questions. So we really got down to the, the nuts and bolts of the frame where Bill actually has the frame with him um, and shows us, uh, you know, close ups of how the rear end works and um, pretty much every nook and cranny of the frame so uh, make sure you go and check that one out you said you watched that one sean i certainly did i loved it yeah, yeah. i even um messaged bill after and said yeah really really impressed and um interested to see what extra colorways he's going to come out with and i'd like the cyan blue and he said yeah that color would suit you i'm like okay yeah cool, <laughs> <laughs> cool thanks bill yeah did you did you watch it, Gary? I've watched bits and pieces of it. I didn't sit and watch the entirety. I sort of skipped through it. I, I've been a bit um, handicapped time-wise lately, so I, I, I um, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. I did have look a look at bits and pieces of it, but yeah, yeah cool. Because it's forty-five minutes or something. Yeah. Uh, that one's probably close to an hour, I think. Yeah, I know it looked so, like it went for a while, so I skipped through it a bit. But I will get an opportunity to sit down and actually have a look at it. So make sure you do, because there's a Toby Henderson one coming that um, is an hour and seven minutes long and talks all about box and the new ABC stuff that we discussed. Uh, I think in the last show. Um, Sean, mm -hmm. have you had a chance to watch the preview of that yet? I certainly did, because you were kind enough to send it to me. <laughs> yesterday yesterday yeah so i um while i was folding my washing um, <laughs> oh you're fine for as well yeah i am i am handicapped too <laughs> time wise yeah no and i just yeah stuck my earbuds in and listened to it and um yeah it was really really interesting yeah so that'll be coming out soon um they've got a launch that they wanted that interview to coincide with. Um, I haven't got a firm date on that. I was told at the start of this week and that's well and truly gone now. So yeah. fingers crossed any day now we'll be dropping that interview for everybody to watch. Yeah, no, it's good. It was really good. So we'll do that one. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you'd be interested because you actually worked with Toby quite a bit with THE, Vigor, um, what yeah. other brands, Vico, Intense. Intense and Sins and everything. Yeah. Sins and all that, yeah. Spent a lot of time with him overseas. So, oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if people realise uh, it took a while for Gary to click that the ECI TV episodes are named after songs. And um, Oh, really? <laughs> he, did, did, he didn't realise that. Oh, well, no, I did, I, but it was probably 20 episodes in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was getting hard for me to actually keep track of which songs I've used already. So I set up an uh, ECI TV uh, Spotify playlist. So now I can see yeah. the duplicates. Um, so if you guys are interested in some of the music that's influenced the naming of our uh, episodes, then make sure you follow the link that's in the description on YouTube. That's so cool. That so is what's so this one cool. going to be named? We don't know yet until you go to do the editing and see what music you're listening to. Basically, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty. What, um, would you, what, yeah, maybe Gary could come up with a with a title for a change. No, you know? no. no. Oh, that's right, his time handicap. That's right. Maybe we we do the keep away from run around Sean. Remember that song we were singing on our way up to Bathurst. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird that was a weird trip. That was a really weird that that trip was weird, wasn't it? It was just even the house we stayed in was weird. Like just, that was a that was destined to yeah, I don't know what happened on that trip. Maybe we save that trip for another episode because we've got lots more to get. Yeah, through. no, that's, that's yeah, I'm all good. That's all good. Uh so I've 
put a note here for Oz Cycling. I did say that potentially we won't talk about any more events coming up because they just keep getting cancelled and postponed. Uh, Oz Cycling have continued with their COVID shuffle and have moved the Australian Championships to Narang on December 8th to the 12th and preceding that with two national series rounds for December uh, 4th and 5th also at Narang. Um, so that potentially could be a big week, but it could also be just um, a second Queensland state championships because, you know, if we're not moving and New South Wales aren't moving and everyone else is all locked down, it's going to be hard to get there. Mm. Uh, the Victorian state championships had already been uh, also been rescheduled there for the 26th to the 28th of November. So very close to when the um, national series and the nationals will be on. And potentially if we have 14 day isolation, Victorians may not even be able to go to the nationals. No. Okay. So, um, no. yeah, I don't know. I, I cycling are doing the big scramble. They're trying to put those events on for us. But uh, yeah, I, I, I personally think it's a whole lot to write off, and we'll be looking at racing again next year. Yeah, it's it's even when you talk like that, it's, it just it just is so disheartening to even. I think we're all just yeah, yeah, not even going to think about that anymore. You can't even get excited. You you just sort of yeah, okay. You know, it's it's a weird feeling not to even remotely be excited or or hopeful. Well, I I know there's people out there that are still hopeful about racing and stuff, and I get it. It's cool to be like that, but I, I just personally feel like, yep, yeah, I'm not even going to try and get invested in, in maybe that happening. It's kind of funny how some of us are feeling like that. I, th I think the problem with that, Sean, is the fact that you get your hopes up and then the goalposts move. You get your hopes yeah. up, goalposts move. So you just yeah, get yeah. to the stage where you're almost numb and you just go, look, until I yeah, know yeah. we're going, I'm not even going to think about it. Yeah. So I think that constantly happening throughout the last 220 days or whatever we've been in lockdown, yeah, um, it just gets you to the point where you just go, look, when it happens, it happens. Yeah, yeah. I think you've hit the nail right on the head there. Gaz for sure and that's yeah I know I know people I talk to are kind of feeling the same and then there's other people who are a little bit younger than us I guess still got plenty of energy and vigor and that's the whole, yeah yeah it's gonna happen for sure for sure I think it's yeah. a lot of people younger than us actually <laughs> 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 I wouldn't want to mention our combined age right now <laughs> oh shit <laughs> and it almost, it almost equal today's COVID um, stats wouldn't it <laughs> 600 and something. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. When we were running uh, through the show, Gary and I sat down and um, put the running sheet together. He said, oh, you know, the guys at um, BMX Beers and Bullshit, Kalen and, and Bruce, have been putting together some good content. We've never mentioned it. And I think it's just an oversight on our behalf. We normally... <laughs> Um, sort of forget about that sort of stuff. So make sure you check out the podcast from BMX Beers and Bullshit. I think they've actually yeah. done about six or seven episodes by now. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. They're absolutely good. I mm. love them. And it looks Apparently like just little little bit of a warning for language content, but that's just yeah, yeah. that's just is what it is. I, I'd that's say from what I've heard, because I actually haven't listened to an episode yet, um, it's a very big language warning. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> potentially <laughs> potentially uh, MA audience. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when, I mean, the boys are um, busting gold caps off bottles. So, I mean, drinking. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, anything. But Kalen's always, you know, he's always been um, pretty forward with his opinions. And, you know, but it's it's really good. It's a great insight. I've, I've learned a lot, especially about the high performance, you know, at the elite level and what goes beyond closed doors and the pressure those guys are under. And it was re it's really mm. insightful. And it's a, just a good laugh. It really is. And especially in the COVID times, we, we need that. Yeah. We need stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Just I've heard folding you listening to it too. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. a few words I've never heard before, that's all. <laughs> really? No, come on. I blushed. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking just... for... Sorry, if you're looking for other uh, video content as well, Riders Life looks like it's been resurrected. There's been a couple yeah. of videos pop up from them. Yep. Yep. Um, have no, you watched cool, those, cool. Gary? Uh, I haven't. No, I just I just noticed that they're um, being reinvented or resurrected or whatever. Yeah. Um, they do cover a lot of mountain biking as as well, but yeah, it is just cycling in general as well as BMX race. So. Definitely good content for people to, you know, cross over to and have a bit of a look at and everything. It's um, 
Yeah, I'm, I, I used to watch the Riders' Life previously, so I presume you know Luke's back at the helm doing what he used to do, and um, yeah, it'll be it'll turn out really good. Luke does a great him, job. Him and Benny, Benny the yeah. right tech. Yep, yep. Keep sure. find those boys. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I was um got invited to a um uh, before the one of the lockdowns. Uh, ben was actually he's built a pump track in his backyard. And he's, uh, I don't know if we're supposed to say this, but he's asphalted and stuff. And he was going to do a reveal and I got a little invite to go down. So it would have been cool to, but, you know, mm. no. the world we live in is kind of throwing a spanner in the works. <laughs> but hopefully at some stage I might even be get to go down there and I might, you know, take some footage and yeah. all that sort of stuff and have a bit of fun and send you a report maybe. Something yeah. like that. Cool. Together. Uh, cool. I think we've got a little bit of show and tell to sort of start to wrap the show up a little bit. I mean, we sort of finish off with a bit of new product. So there's a couple of things that have come in. One is there's been a, a redesign of the answer, answer pedals. So these are the new answer pedals, which um, Shane pointed out to me. I didn't realise we had them in stock, but um, Shane pointed out to me a few days ago that they actually have been redesigned. So that, that's the new style of answer pedal. They um, there are eight uh, three eighty six grams uh, seal bearings, alloy body, replaceable pins, very similar to the previous ones, just a whole new design. And they retail about one eighty nine Australian. But what we have got is we've got the previous model um, on sale for about one fifty nine through the site. So you go up and check out check it out and. Um, knock knock on the door of your local and see if they can get some for you um we've also got a new grip in from chase so the odi vans grip um as a bit of a collaboration between chase odi and vans so they've arrived in the warehouse yesterday and they're just a, a, a vans lock on grip but just with uh chase chase etched end caps Chase nice. So they're, they're limited edition, aren't they, Gary? They are a very limited edition, and we've only got them in black. So um, they'll only last as long as they last, and once they're sold out, they're gone. So they're $64.95. So hit up your local again to grab a set of those. You're a fan of the van scripts, aren't you, Sean? I certainly am. Do you have I, some I on one of your bikes? You, you used to at one stage? I had... I did have them on my cruiser, and I've just replaced them with the Troy Lee Designs ODI grips. But yeah, I definitely I've run about I've had about four sets of the band grips. I love them. I've oh. had like the tan, the red, black. I've had blue. Yeah, so I've I've I even had the the Colt van. Oh yeah. For a while without yeah. the flanges at all. So yeah, I've definitely I definitely like the the feel of them. So, um, but. Yeah, I haven't had them for a while, but I thought I'd, I haven't ran the Troy Lee ones before, so I thought, oh, yeah, I'll give them a try. So, yeah, awesome. But they look cool, Gaz. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. we've only got a very limited amount of them, but, um, yeah. Is that just a limited run to make them special? Or is that just because of the way things are in the world again? Or is it just, just a limited run. Limited yeah. run, yeah, cool. Yeah. So they did have... Um, Chase did have colour options, but they've sold out already, so I was only able to grab some black. Cool, at least you got some. That's exactly right. That's there's exactly a lot of right. there's a lot of Chase people I know, especially in Victoria, that will just Chase riders, you know, uh, that will snap those up quite quickly. Now, due to the um, shortage of some products, like we're very very low on alienation rims, which is a very popular malice and mischief rim sales for us. So we've, um, we're even having a little bit of an issue trying to get a good stock of Icon rims. So what we've bought in is some price-pointed XLC rims. So again, they're in 20-inch or 24-inch and in an aero design, as you can see. XS are synonymous with wheels and hubs at the moment. So what we've done is we've been able to get some rims in, in both braked and brakeless. Any colour you like, as long as it's black with white stickers. <laughs> and again, they're 314 grams and just under $100 each. So they're a, a 6061 T6 alloy designed specifically for race BMX. So they're quite light. They're actually, they actually are lighter than a couple of the carbon rims out there on the market. 
but obviously a fraction of the price. So they're in stock at the moment. You're not going to sell them with the custom colour kits? Sell them with a texter? <laughs> well, what? one of these. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a story, there's a story behind these, isn't there, boys? Yeah, there is a story behind yeah. them. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's a good big story. shout out to Glenn. Yeah, a big <laughs> shout out to Glenn, yeah. But yeah, no, the decal, this, the, the decals on that, the design, that look, actually looks, looks really good, you know, because it's all about how things look sometimes, and black is black, but that you know looks what? really good. I've said, it, I've said it numerous times with um, Chase and XS and everything products, that whatever they do, actually just, you, you guarantee that it's going to look good. You know, I mean, Next year's the 2022 range of bikes. I've virtually ordered those sight unseen because I just know they're going to pop. And yeah, all yeah. the products that they, they're involved in um, just turn out very, very good. What I did yeah. find out today was XLC, which is the wheels and the hubs and the rims, actually stand for extra light comp. So that's either a component, extra light component, or extra light competition. Oh. So that's what XLC stands for. Cool. Um, one other last little thing, I think it is, yep. Um, profile push stems, which we sell quite a few of when we can get them. They've, um, they've reinvented and bought out Aqua again. So we've got some Aqua mini hubs, but we're able to, oh. able to secure some Aqua push stems in 48 and 53 mil reach. They're a top load stem. I have blinged this one out a little bit and put tie bolts in because I just love the way they look with tie bolts. But yeah, they're um, we've got a very limited number of these in. I think I've got five of each or something. That's it. So yeah, aqua push stems are available at the moment. So that won't be a standard color. I don't know. Look, uh, aqua used to be a standard color, and then mm. they phased it out. So. Maybe they've just found a, a electroplater or anodizer that's been able to do the aqua again. Um, when they bought out the hubs, it was like a limited edition. They were only just going to do a limited run of aqua. But then all of a sudden the stems turned up and I thought, oh, maybe they are expanding it. But don't take my word for it because, honestly, you might find that these might sell out and then we can't get them again because we haven't had aqua for oh, two years. Didn't so, you only just clear out the C-clamps? I saw the last one a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's such a cool colour, though. It, it really pops when you actually see it. In. And yeah. the push stem is such a bulletproof stem, such it, a good stem. It's crazy how yeah. good that stem is. It's just it, so, They're amazing. It is, and so universal because it's, it's used extensively in freestyle, but as well in race. So it's... Uh, yeah. It's such a, a good lightweight, just meat and potatoes type stem that's just yeah ticks all the boxes. It can handle yeah. um it can handle our um wealth of experience. Let's say, Sean. Oh, I use and our yeah okay. <laughs> and your G forces. Say, yeah, I was going to say something on the lines of our you know our COVID ballast, but like <laughs> I think it's actually a bit of COVID ballast. ballast. It was good seen um jill jim alley the the owner of profile too uh he was on the tig welder the other day welding up some elite elite cranks so he still gets out there um wouldn't it's, like it's amazing how much jim is hands-on like that yeah yeah he really he really does um put in and um yeah. for someone that's yeah you know, getting on a bit in years um i i'd definitely call him my senior and um and he still gets down on the shop floor yeah. and tig welds yeah. Yeah, he's quite hands-on. Great guy. I've Great spent guy, a lot of yeah. time with Jim and um, and his lovely wife, wife Nancy. And, um, yeah, yeah. They're, be they're beautiful people. They're very it's so cool. cool to see, yeah. It was really cool to see, you know, in there with the helmet on and, and, and yep. welding up some amazing-looking uh, elite cranks. Yeah, well, see, I mean, that'll be good because we haven't had elite cranks for quite a while here. So, so that's probably about it for this week's show, I'd say. Yeah, that's all I've got. I know we did skip a week. Um, things things have been sort of going on a bit crazy down here in Victoria. So, yeah, not that you have to, but it'd be nice if, if you could all feel sorry for us. With <laughs> you know, sort of one, two, we're, three. We're, oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, not only just get over fires, but then we had those horrific storms where trees went down everywhere and houses got houses and cars and 
everything got yeah. destroyed. And then we've got riots and COVID and 200 days of lockup. And now we've got an earthquake. So, Oh, yeah. How, how did you get on the earthquake? Normally, um, if there's a any devastating thing that happens, it hits you. So did the... It, well, the, the the epicenter of the earthquake was probably uh, probably 100k from us, if that. No, probably would have been probably, probably an hour hour as the crow flies, and um, yeah, being a six um, or 5.9 or whatever on the Richter scale, it was quite funny because yeah, it hit here and um, we were in the office um, and it built and everything was shaking like crazy to the point where we vacated because I honestly thought the, the um, complex was going to come down. But the, the um, it lasted for a while. But the real weird thing about it is when it all stopped, you could hear it rumbling off into the distance. And you could just picture it like heading to New South Wales or, or whatever, because it was felt a long way away. But you could hear it. And that was just real eerie. It just sounded like a train or something in the distance yeah. slowly going. But, yeah, it was quite severe. I mean, it... It didn't. We didn't lose anything off the shelves or anything. Everything was shaking and rattling. But you know, like bird baths in the garden had fallen over and things had fallen over in the yard. So yeah, it was quite, quite, uh, quite interesting. I've experienced a few earthquakes yeah, it, like that over in um, Taiwan because we used to travel there pretty extensively. And um, this was probably one of the worst ones I've ever felt. Um, but it was just ironic. As soon as it went through, I thought, yeah. Come on, throw something else at us, Danny. <laughs> yeah. Let's just hit us with everything. I'm waiting for the yeah. plague of locusts to, yeah. to just, uh, yeah. or frogs or something like that. So. Yeah, it was um it was even that it was even felt in New Zealand, which is normally That's the place. Insane, isn't it? Yeah, it, there it registered two point nine there. So it, to travel that far and still have a little bit of a just, just mm. show you how strong it was. And, yeah, here in Bendigo, yeah, like the house I'm in, because it's a fairly old house, we really felt like the veranda, because we're up on a bit of a hill and part of the house sort of is on stilts. And, yeah, it was it was full on. Like, I thought the veranda was going to break off the house. Jeez. And Ken's, Ken's was at home and she was in the bath and she said the water was shaking in the bath and all that sort of crazy stuff. So, yeah, pretty mm. scary for some yeah. people, but, yeah. Well, like I said, it was to the stage where we vacated because I honestly thought it was just going to keep building and we could have lost the complex here. But, but anyway, oh, wow. it, it is what it is. It's just they, they do say whatever whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So <laughs> I think we're going to come out of this pretty friggin' strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit oh, debilitating or something at the moment. It's... Uh, yeah, just like we we're talking about with BMX, it's just it's almost like there's no end in sight. You know, we've got riots every day, and we've got you know all sorts of things going on. So, but anyway, well, you know, that is what it is. But what's good though is we've got shows like this to and have a ah. laugh, and and you know, like like the message is, is you know, reach out to your friends and just check on them and make sure everybody's in it. Just have a quick phone call and yeah. talk some crap for a little while, and you know, just just sort of. Talk about it, something besides it is, COVID. It is amazing how much. I mean, I know you rang me yesterday just to check on me, make sure everything was okay, and it's amazing that those simple phone calls can make such a difference. I mean, that that was a whole lot of my day yesterday, Dozer. So thanks for that. Um, so you got a pretty dull day normally. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't digging the septic like some. Oh, <laughs> a man's got to do what a man's got to do. No one's <laughs> ringing me. Oh, you ran the <laughs> septic. So yeah, yeah, no, it's good. But one hundred percent, guys. Yeah, that's it. We we all as the, as the BMX family, we do need to look after each other. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Cool. Thank you very and much. You, that's okay, mate. Well, Bye. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. I, <laughs> Oh, Jay Tui, look at you go. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. I think we're just babbling on now. I know. Thanks, guys. I appreciate for the invite. And nah, and thanks very much fun. for joining us, Dozer. Yeah, no, nah, that's cool. Thanks for all your input, Shane. No worries. Thank you, Shane. I guess, I guess we'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Oh, if you want me back, I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> we'll have our people talk to your people. Your people. <laughs> and don't call us, we'll call you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Now> Luigi, <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Thanks. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Well done, boys. That was good. <laughs>